Welcome to On The Chain. So Jeff, something else came out this week too. It's like, there's been a couple of good interviews. So we saw one with Brad Garlinghouse, which we're going to feature in a moment here, but we also saw one with Monica Long, which we'll get into, but this is really interesting. But let's listen to what Brad Garlinghouse says when, when asked about, you know, the, uh, the SEC, the V Ripple case. In terms of where things stand today, and you know, I'll try to not get too much into the, the legal weeds. Uh, you are right that I, I feel very confident that we'll, we'll see a decision from the courts in this year. In fact, uh, I think I would guess it'll be in weeks, not months. Uh, there's Ooh. some decisions that happened last week uh, that you may have read about that the, the judge uh, ruled against the SEC's effort to uh, redact certain information about uh, a, a very kind of infamous speech that the then director of corporate finance, a guy named Bill Hinman, gave talking about uh, why ETH in his view was not a security and it, the the court just ruled last week that the the notes and emails associated with that are going to be made public and should be public around june 13th so i think that's a huge win for transparency but it really calls out is there hasn't been clarity and despite calls and demands from leaders across the crypto industry uh we haven't seen that yet but as i said the ripple decided to lean in and fight this fight both for Ripple, but for the whole industry, we've spent a lot of money defending it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think what we've called out is really that the, the, the government in the United States and the, the SEC particularly is putting politics Boom. ahead of smart Boom. policy. Boom. And Boom. because of that, you're seeing entrepreneurs go overseas, you're seeing companies mm -hmm. like Ripple. Most of our hiring is non-US now. Most of our customers, wow. as I mentioned, That's a big statement, are uh, non-US. And so wow. I, I think it's kind of to be expected that's that statement is is everything chip uh that clip yeah. super super meaningful for brad garlinghouse is hitting it out of the park the the politicians are letting politics intervene their their desire to to win at all cost whatever their their policy objectives are um which is extremely detrimental to the progress and innovation here in the U.S. Brad Garland House is singling that out perfectly and not just pointing at others and saying, look, others are going overseas. Ripple is going overseas. He didn't say they're moving their corporate offices over there, but he said they have zero hiring in the U.S. market right now. All of their hiring is overseas. All of their, all of their investment, all of their purchasing, everything is going on overseas right now. They the U.S. market, you know, they'll they'll put it on a back burner if they have to, and they'll say, "Hey, our progress for the next decade is going to be someplace else. It won't be here." That's huge. Well, the other thing he said too, I think, which was interesting too, is he said the the settlement's going to be in weeks, not months. That was a, another sort of a, a an interesting one. I was like, "Wait a minute, weeks, not months." So I don't know. I think it could be June, July ish, but. I mean, I never expected this to come out in March. It's just too big. The ramifications are too large. A lot of careful thought has to be into it. Um, let's listen in. But Monica Long was interviewed recently, too. And she she chimes in. I can always lower it. We do know that the judge oh, issued wow. an order um, very recently that uh, that, that pertain to, you know, which documents in the case would be kept under seal and which ones would not. Um, very importantly, at least in our view, uh, Bill Hinman's emails will be um, revealed. They'll be made public in the coming weeks. Um, and we think that's significant because uh, Bill Hinman, when he was acting uh, director of Corp Fin at the SEC, he gave a very famous speech in 2018 where he, he said that he saw or the SEC saw that Ether uh, did not look like a security because it had been sufficiently decentralized. And now we're going to, you know, through the revealing of his emails, we're going to get more insight into what went into that decision. Uh, Jeff, what's amazing about Tell us this a little bit more about before, before you get into that, let's break this down a little bit. But what's really I think people like, forget, like you, now you have two people on record, right? You have CEO Brad Garlinghouse talking about the Bill Hinman emails and the fact that they're going to be going public, right? Now you have Monica Long, who's the president of Ripple, also talking significant about this, and we're going to get some insight. Now, what we realize is the fact that both Monica and Brad Garlinghouse both have seen the, 
the Hinman emails. They have the Hinman emails and they're not the redacted versions. I don't believe it. I believe they have the full one. So this is a uh, pretty interesting from the standpoint of tell us we're going to see something pretty spectacular without telling us we're going to see something pretty spectacular. Right, Jeff? Well, this, this is where, you know, there, there's so many things at play right now. And so with Gary Gensler, we know, you know, and Chip, you and I have talked about the fact there can be no settlement because of the distance. You know, you've got the SEC and and Ripple are so far apart on where they need to, to meet that how do you have a settlement when you have two parties and a big gap in the middle? Now, if you have the Hinman emails and there's a, now a specific, uh, you know, uh, format or a specific tone or messaging that's been coming out of the sec that is in conflict with how gary gensler is now presenting himself or a complete misunderstanding there's there's a lot of other things that are baked into it where the sec at some point is now going to have to step back and say we made a mistake um and you know it could be a massive massive loss to the sec and and this is probably how they're how they could potentially be um Package, packaging it up to to the attorneys at the SEC saying, here you go. Here's what's going to happen at this point. You're going to have a massive loss. You're going to lose all credibility. Uh, and and that the market now is going to move in a specific direction. Uh, or, you know, you can all come together. Crypto is, is here to stay. Uh, Gary, the SEC, you're pushing innovation offshore. It's going to be detrimental uh, for your party in the next election cycle. There's who knows all of the different variables that they're packaging into this, uh, you know, in order to achieve some sort of outcome, some sort of a settlement. I, I still, Jeb, I'm still going to fall on the side. There can't be a, a proper settlement. There won't be a settlement. I, I just until Gary Gensler is removed, um, I don't see there being a settlement. I think he's going to be hard headed right to the end. I know this is, you know, kind of the tone of what we're seeing here, uh, but I think that it's going to have to come to a, a, a court decision. Uh, because it's needed. It's needed in the space. I don't believe that with Gary Gensler at the helm, he's going to agree to the fact that XRP is not a security in the secondary market, even though they're going to show the Hinman emails making certain statements on Ethereum. I think he's, you know, with him at the helm, they're going to have to remove him uh, in order to have a settlement. And maybe that's part of the settlement. Maybe that's, that's part of the agreement. Step down. We're, we're one of the few that's been in the camp of no settlement. There's no settlement. If you look at it, like what you just said, Jeff, if you look at it on the merit of this case, the only way you really could settle the way Garling House said that they would settle is they would have to have something say, st stating to the effect that today's XRP, just like Bill Hinman said in an email, he believes that ETH is uh, sufficiently decentralized. We would have something very similar where we would hear that today's XRP, yeah, maybe if you want to look back, you want to say, well, did they sell it? Was it completely decentralized? Did they really have the product nailed down? And it goes a lot to what Hester Purse was trying to roll out with the three years sort of like um, safe harbor. That was her safe harbor. You get three years to sort of work the bugs out. By, th by year three, you have every six months you check in. Where are you at? Where do you need to be? That by the year three, and then they later revise it to two years to be decentralized. But that, if you think about it, earlier projects, hey, it's it's iffy, right? But, you know, that's going back 11 years versus today's XRP was completely de decentralized. And we also saw it with all the uh, additional filings um, in the case. There's a lot of other companies that supported their use cases, their business models. So let's listen to what else uh, uh, Monica um, Long is saying here in this interview. I think, let me back it up because I think she's asked a question here. Let's see. There we go. Tell us a little bit more about these Hinman papers. I know we want to get more insight into what went into that decision, but once we get that insight, what could it mean for your case? Uh, it, it, you know, it's it's to be determined, you know, just uh, by the court, of course, what ultimately they will decide in the case. The, the ruling on the Hinman emails, we think is certainly a win for transparency, uh, you know, where, the crypto industry at large is really seeking clarity from the U.S. Uh, we think that this transparency will go a long way. And then ultimately, of course, the ruling in our case. Uh, Jeff, it's like, that's a tough question to ask because you don't want to say the wrong thing, right? So she's right. It is a win for transparency because if this is a government 
organization, right? An, an enforcement body of the government. Why is everything so secret? Why are why do you have to subpoena records? Why do you have to ask seven or eight times for the court? If you, if it was a public citizen, you couldn't you certainly couldn't get away with that. So it is a win for transparency. And unfortunately, everything's slow walk these days. Even the FOIA requests, like, oh, we don't know. We can't find them. We don't know. Nobody knows. And they just slow walk these FOIA requests. And uh, it's, it's, it's troubling in a lot of ways, man. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.